that was my writing material it was not known at that time that if you use m d m a i this is a generalization but i think it's pretty close to the truth if you use m d m a more than let's say four times a year maximum uh... it won't be too long before you find out it doesn't have its magical effect anymore um, <coughs> since i was using it uh, once a week um, for at least a year i found uh, that i was beginning to take a dosage of around uh, 250 milligrams with 150 um, supplement. And uh, I realized that was a little overdoing it. So I stopped it completely, no difficulty. But I have not been able to use MDMA since, um, aside from the fact that it's illegal, of course. Uh, I did try it once, about a year after I'd stopped. <coughs> and uh, it had a depressive effect, which is completely opposite of what it usually was. So I haven't tried it since. I would very much like to try it once more and see if, if uh, uh, there's a difference. But Recovering I, your, yeah. your response. Uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful drug. I believe in, it, in its uh, value for psychotherapy, absolutely. Uh, as far as psychedelics, because MDMA is not a psychedelic, uh, as far as psychedelics go, <coughs> we take less of them now than we used to because uh, we don't have as much energy as we did when we were in our 30s and 40s and 50s. And also, we don't have enough time. We're, we're too damn busy. It's as if you burned out one of the receptors or whatever it was that MDMA is active at and it oh, doesn't it, repair. MDMA, but, the, but uh, the, the psychedelics. Oh, no, in general, yes. We don't take enough of them. And when I have not had a good psychedelic trip for, let's say, six months, I begin to feel uh, that I'm beginning to get out of balance. I get too irritable, and um, my, my general uh, view of life gets grouchy. And I love her anyway. Though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then if I have a chance at a good trip, I feel revitalized, frankly, uh, physically as well as mentally. Um, I think that instead of, uh, instead of regarding psychedelics as a drain on the system, uh, frankly, I, I, they are my favorite vitamin. Uh, that, that's the, the effect they have on me. <laughs> <laughs> How do you define consciousness, and how much of it is determined by chemistry? Well, I, that's not a question. Uh, I consider consciousness where you are if you're alive. And a lot of people put it as a brain function. I consider consciousness as a mental function. And it's there all the time. I mean, you may be sound asleep, but you're dreaming, and there's a consciousness there. You may be awake, and you may or not remember what you dreamed. And for all I know, there are three or four or seven lives going on that I don't remember either awake or asleep. But I feel consciousness is my, is my relationship, a living relationship with the world. And uh, so I don't think it's a matter of, of being conscious or unconscious. I think when you're unconscious, you're conscious in a different way. I really believe you're part of the, of the system. Do you want to add to that? <coughs> Yeah, I think uh, while we're in human form, um, uh, everything is chemistry. Uh, as um, um, uh, everything is physics or chemistry, or you know that that's that's part of uh, the human life. The question of whether consciousness uh, exists after death, I am absolutely sure it does. But um, you know, people people have different opinions on that. It also depends on what you mean by consciousness. You know, uh, do, you, do you mean uh, uh, essential knowingness? Uh, do you need, well, you can go down the list. Um, 
chemistry while we're human and nothing to do with chemistry when we've, we're out of the human phase. I remember one time I was on an experiment, I forget the chemical, it doesn't matter, but uh, as I was, in fact, you were with me, we were I together. Was. And um, okay. I was looking at the clock because it was interesting to see the second hand of the clock going around. And as I was watching the second hand of the clock, it was going slower and slower and slower. And then it began almost, it went around to 15 seconds, 16 seconds, 17 seconds. My God, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stop. And it occurred to me, if the clock were to stop, what defines death? And suddenly I realized I had taken a chemical that was causing the clock to slow down continuously. And we were both watching the clock. And well, said, we were making the, the second hand to slow down. Yeah. And you know, suddenly we, we commented, made some comment, and we both snapped around out of it, and the clock went normally again. No. He chickened out. <laughs> uh, he, he chickened out. And... Uh, <laughs> Um, I, th I think it's a very interesting question, though, if we had actually made that second hand stop, and we were very, very close to it. Um, I, I think we wrote about that in the second book. Uh, it was a very interesting experience. The, the material was uh, something called marijuana. And uh, it, it, I think we'd taken, um, a relative of mine had given us um, brownies of the pot type, mm -hmm. and that uh, that was, I think marijuana is the greatest uh, a drug for fooling around with time. <laughs> There's no question. And uh, we almost uh, stopped that clock. I don't blame Sasha, but I would kind of like to see what happened after the second hand quit. Okay. I just, I'm glad we didn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Other questions? Robert. So Robert asked the ontological question, uh, similar to what Dan Merker was talking about earlier about true hallucinations versus pseudo-hallucinations. In some of these experiences, we feel like we're in touch with another world, um, another dimension. And so what's your opinion? Is that, is that real or is it internal? Well, I, but from my personal point of view, I find that the psychedelic experience is not something that's imposed upon me. It's something that's going on all this time inside of me and I'm just not aware of it, I have not stopped to think about it. So what I, my, my belief is that when you get involved in a psychedelic experience, you are in a communication with part of yourself that had, you've, you've given up trying to communicate with or you've forgotten about communicating with. So it's not a, something that's imposed by a drug, it's something that allows, the drug allows you to experience and to, to, to function with. So I, I look upon it as being a, a a revealing thing from within myself rather than a thing imposed upon myself by an external drug. Yeah, that, we once uh, were called to Australia uh, for a trial where um, we had to define uh, hallucination. Um, I, I forget what our definition was, but um, a hallucination, uh, sorry about that, uh, is, is where you are seeing things that um, are, are not visible or um, experienceable uh, by the rest of the people around you. Um, and you have forgotten that you took a drug. Um, now, if you are a 